Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about maintenance for HVAC. And before you move on, before you click off of this video, I think what I'm about to say may surprise you because I know of companies that are doing maintenances or tune-ups to heating and air systems. And these five things that I'm going to share are sometimes missed even on their tune-ups. So these five things need to be maintained on your heating and air system and a lot of times are neglected. Again, five things that you should be getting maintained regularly and a lot of times are not. Number one, you should be having your coils cleaned. And you might say, well, Josh, isn't that common sense? You'd be surprised at how many times we see heating and air companies that they'll do a tune-up or a checkup and they don't actually clean the coils, making that system as new as possible again. A lot of the systems we're seeing today airflow is the big thing airflow across that coil means how efficient it is and so on so the lower that airflow in a lot of cases the dirtier the coil the less efficient that system is going to be at heating or cooling your home it's something that we do basically on every tune-up whether the coil looks clean or not we're still going to clean that coil and again make it as new as possible again making that airflow better i've actually heard customers say or even other pros say it's not that big a deal dirty coils the system still works I've I've never had maintenance done to my system and it's lasted all these years and I can say that you are the exception because I have seen actual breakdowns and problems with heating and air systems and the only problem is the coil has just not been clean in a while and that's all we do we clean the coil and the system works great again or clean the coil and make whatever repair needs to be done and the system works great again. So get those coils cleaned so that the system can operate good. And by the way, there is an indoor and outdoor coil on most systems, so make sure you're having them both cleaned properly. And also make sure they're accessible. A lot of indoor units will see people have stuff stacked up in front of the unit, or maybe it's been installed in some way, the installer didn't care about the future maintenance of the system. Make sure that that system is accessible as much as possible so that way it can be maintained properly. Number two, drains. Most systems today, a lot of them have some sort of drain on them. So whether it's in AC mode, and now we're even seeing with like high efficiency furnaces, they can be in heat mode, whatever mode it's in, they'll have some sort of drain and those drains will back up. They'll have issues if not maintained properly. And I've heard over the years, different people saying different things about what you should and shouldn't do, maybe what you should be pouring down the drain. I'm not going to get into all that. A lot of people like to argue about that stuff. In my opinion, you should have a pro clearing those drains properly and then doing some sort of drain treatment. We get these little tablets that we'll throw into the drain pans themselves and also drop them into P-traps and things like that. And they'll inhibit things like algae growth. The point is to make sure that drain continues to do what it's supposed to and gets that moisture, that water out of your home. Number three, heat exchangers. I gotta say, this is probably one of the biggest ones. If you don't get your system maintained like you should, I have seen people say, I don't need maintenance. I haven't had somebody look at my system in all these years and I haven't had any issues only to find out that they actually have a problem with their heat exchanger. And that is a huge safety issue. Having that heat exchanger checked, making sure there's no cracks and there's no carbon monoxide that's making its way into your home one way, shape or form. Essentially a heat exchanger is where the flame blows into that furnace. There's different types of heat exchangers. There's the tubes, there's the clamshell type, there's all kinds of different types. But the point is, you're gonna have this flame blowing into some sort of cavity and then the air in your furnace blows across that cavity and that's how you get the warm air. Those heat exchangers can get cracks or problems, some sort of compromise where it is actually allowing carbon monoxide make it into your home. So make sure you're having that heat exchanger at the bare minimum, have that checked once a year, making sure that everything is okay safety wise. And also if you have any kind of fossil fuel system, so I don't care if you're burning gas, natural gas, propane, oil, if you have an old oil furnace or whatever, if you have any sort of fossil fuel being burned in your home in one way, shape or form, I would not go to sleep tonight 
without a carbon monoxide detector. And I don't care if it's an AC mode or heat mode, anything. I would not go to sleep tonight without having a carbon monoxide detector in my home, especially if you have kids, make sure you have one near them. Make sure you have it near their bedroom. I've done other videos talking about carbon monoxide detectors. There's other things on the internet you can look up on where to place them. People way smarter than me that talk about where to place them and how many you should have in your home. Look that up. But definitely, again, if you have any sort of appliance in your home that is burning some sort of fuel, creating carbon monoxide, don't go to sleep tonight without one. Go to the store. This isn't me selling something. I'll put a link down below to one in the description if you want to click on that so you can get it ordered. But you can go to your local hardware store or even Walmart or Target or wherever in a lot of cases and get your own. Definitely tonight, make sure before you even go to bed, get you a carbon monoxide detector. Number three, accessories. And this is one that's overlooked a lot of times by not just homeowners, but by professionals themselves. And that is when a heating and air system has some sort of added accessory. And what I'm talking about is things like humidifiers, dehumidifiers, extra filtration, or some sort of indoor air quality products. All of those products have to be maintained as well. I've seen humidifiers pad look like it hasn't been changed in years and it's all moldy and air is being passed across that pad and blowing into your home and folks are not having those accessories maintained properly. Humidifiers, a lot of them have those pads. Dehumidifiers have filters, just like your home has a filter that you're supposed to replace every so often, every 30 to 90 days. And most homeowners, and I'm included, I probably don't change mine as often as I should, uh, but folks will let those go a little bit longer than that. And dehumidifiers are no different. They'll have a filter that either needs to be replaced every so often or cleaned and you can reinstall it. Maybe it's washable. But the point is a lot of these accessories for them to operate like they're supposed to and also not cause other issues like the mold should be maintained, have them checked, have them maintained and make sure that everything's on the up and up with those so they're not creating more issues. And number five, things that are overlooked, things that are not maintained like they should. This is going to be a new one. If you are comparing this to other videos where they're talking about things that should be maintained or whatever. And that is something that didn't even exist 20 years ago because systems today have updated firmware software, things like that, that you should be getting updated from time to time. A good example is we had the Daikin Fit come out a few years ago and there was a few little things that it wasn't really problems, but things that could work better. And they had firmware come out that took care of a lot of those issues. So if you are in a lot of cases with most systems, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, those systems will download the updated firmware and things like that on their own. Maybe you might get a prompt as the homeowner. It may say, hey, your system needs to be updated. Would you like to do that? Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're getting it updated. And then finally, if you're one of those folks that for whatever reason, you do not have it connected to Wi-Fi, we have customers in our market that maybe it's their second home and they just don't have Wi-Fi there. I have family that live in the country and they can't even get high-speed internet if they even wanted to. I think those days are changing, but for the longest time, they couldn't even get normal high-speed internet. Where I grew up, there's not even cell phone reception. So talk to your local professional and in a lot of cases, they can figure out a way to get that firmware updated. Maybe it might be that they might have to pull the thermostat off the wall take it somewhere and get it updated or they may be able to if they're in an area that maybe you don't have it connected to wi-fi they can set up a hotspot with their smartphone and be able to do it that way so a lot of times you'll see technicians pull out their phone and set up a hotspot and then connect the thermostat to it and update the firmware with it a lot of times that will make the system again work more efficiently or maybe there are times when they're just updating it to help you the homeowner i remember a few years ago some firmware came out and it made the tech a little larger on the thermostat things like that that's the big five if you have something that i missed that you think folks should be watching out making sure they're maintaining better obviously there's way more than these five in fact most good heating and air companies have some sort of checklist when they're doing their tune-ups, making sure that they're not missing anything. And I can tell you at Griffin Air, we have a checklist that we go through on every tune-up and making sure that we're making that system as good as possible and making sure it's working as efficiently as possible. So anyway, if you do have something I've missed, something that should be maintained better, please comment down below. I'd love to hear that. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.